Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Deason here with Alex King and Daniel Mangina. Today is Tuesday, May the 12th, 2020, 4 p.m. New York time, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we are happy to be doing the show today, despite the fact that Alex and I have not had the best of possible days or the best of possible weeks. But you know what? We both agreed, Daniel, before we started the show, by the end of the hour, we always feel good, which is why we call this your daily dose of happy. Facts. Today's going to not be an exception. It's going to be continuing to, to be along the same line. So Daniel is smiling. You can see the smile on his face. It's just kind of creeping in there. It's going to mm-hmm. be good. Um, we, we are going to start from a point of step one, as Abraham Hicks calls it, which is folk, identifying what it is that you don't like so that you can re-identify what it is that you do like. And we pretty much agreed, Alex and I pretty much agreed before the show started that um, we don't like the stress that we're dealing with. And Daniel came in and pointed out he didn't like the fear that we're dealing with either. And, and you know what? I agree. Mm. <laughs> we, we don't like it either. You know, so <laughs> there, there's a starting point. And now our challenge is to figure out and kind of get, get ourselves into a place of how do we leave the stress behind and how do we leave the fear behind? Mm-hmm. So, your mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> is to figure out how to get yourself into a higher vibration place. Please destroy this tape after you're done listening to it. <laughs> Actually, save it. I just like to any timeline instead. <laughs> that's, a lot, that's a lot easier, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, how are you doing? Alex, I mean, you're looking beautiful. I love the, the way your hair has been holding up under the new color scheme. Really nice. Thank you. <laughs> I try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And somehow you manage, despite the fact that you're going with more of a blue than a purple, somehow it still match, matches the, the headphones. I don't quite understand what you did there. But I know. Well, cool. see, they're blue up here, so the blue matches the blue. Yeah, right I guess here. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But, so cool. I mean, you, you kept the unicorn theme going in a very, very purpley blue way. <laughs> yes. I call this Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh, very nice. Sugar Plum Fairy. Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, facts. Good times. Good times. <laughs> oh, sure. Now Tchaikovsky's going to demand his cut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can't afford Daniel to be singing all these songs. <laughs> I just love it. I love it. I've got my mic and everything. I'm about to say. All right. Serious. Serious. <laughs> <completely serious. laughs> Actually, Sirius is the farthest thing from our minds today, and that's what, what we're trying to do. We're trying to build the energy. Oh, really we about to wild out right now. We about to wild out with some crazy. <laughs> we're going to be seriously silly, guys. Seriously silly. So uh, we don't have to get into the details of the stresses and fears and so forth that we've been dealing with that we don't like to. Um, but nevertheless, we can, we can at least identify, yeah, we've been dealing with them. Just like, I mean, let's be perfectly honest. In the middle of a pandemic, that is a fairly common thing to have happen. You know, despite, mm. despite your best efforts and your best intentions, you know, you're, you're just going to find yourself not feeling great at times. And it has nothing to do with being sick. It has to do with dealing with the fears that are associated with this thing. Well, how do we know? This is our first pandemic in life ever. <laughs> Well, I think we know after about uh, 12 weeks of dealing with it. I mean, we have a pretty good idea. Okay, good point, good point. <laughs> I mean, it, it didn't take us long to learn this one. <laughs> nope. That was pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the first day I went to the grocery store and saw all the, the shelves empty and peel, people piling stuff into their grocery carts, yeah, I kind of had an inkling. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You knew it was there. rough when it said, limit one per customer. What? <laughs> funny i don't know about you but here that sign didn't show up until after the shelves had been empty for about a month yeah yeah that's when it happened I, yeah, well for us strange. it was like two weeks because i don't know massachusetts was like all oh, the toilet paper now mm-hmm. so really? <laughs> yeah yeah i still don't get the toilet paper thing i apparently like i think people are concerned that we're gonna be like locked down locked down and we won't be able to wipe our asses by ourselves, so that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm glad you voiced that. Locked down, locked down, what about water? <laughs> well, that's what I said. I was like, let's just buy a bidet and call it a day. I mean, or, you know, get rinse off those, the shower. People started selling those on Instagram. I started getting ads about bidets on Instagram. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like some little, They're rather some, cheap on Amazon, let me tell you. Some little thing that you can attach, that you can put on your toilet that has a, like a little bidet function. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well, I was getting one anyway because Japan Jen was uh she's like you don't understand 
the toilet seat situation in Japan. I have to send you one. So I'm getting one anyway. Well, what's, what, what's the toilet seat situation in Japan? They're super duper fancy. Like they have, they're like, mas- they massage you, they heat up, they mm. glow, they have the day, they, they do all the I wanna, things. I want to glow and massage. They, like... <laughs> they sell gold, they do all, everything, anything you want them to do. I'm naturally doing what the body does. I think that'd be quite <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Some of them are voice activated and you can buy your toilet paper on Amazon as you are going. It kind of reminds me, Alex, of what happened when we been the, the last week we were recording um, mm-hmm. the next episode of The Grass is Greener. And one of our cast members was telling a story about how her grandfather was in the bathroom and her mother was freaking out because he, yeah. was, he would never leave under these new circumstances. I mean, he'd just be there all day long. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> it, was. it was levity at the appropriate moment that we really needed that time. <laughs> Sometimes men just need their bathroom time. That's, just, that's their quiet hour. I mean, I've never had an entire reading supply in the bathroom, but I can, I kind of understand it, you know. I remember those days when there were actual magazines in the bathroom, or, or like yeah. when your grandfather used to take the newspaper in and you wouldn't see him for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a funny thing that um, we used to go to my auntie Shirley's for lunch some some weekends and um, I would always take a relief break in between the main, mo- main meal and dessert. <laughs> <laughs> like clockwork. Main meal, time to make space for dessert, guys. Yay. Gotta make room. Gotta make room. Mm-hmm. Gotta make room. <laughs> well, it... It must have been reassuring to know that everything was in working order. That's all I can say. Yeah, as long as you're going to, with yeah. clockwork. Yeah. yeah. It's nice Regularity to be is a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> big <facts. laughs> Hopefully not too big. <laughs> yes, we have reached a new high and low. We have gone to bathroom jokes. <laughs> oh. But it is working. I mean, the topic, the original topic was stress and fear. We seem to have forgotten that completely. And we pivoted. Right we jumped straight to like step three or four. Of the <laughs> so, yeah, right. the pivot. <laughs> I'm amazed that we're not automatically at step five. It's like zoom. <laughs> <laughs> the magnet works. The magnet um, of positivity. Yeah. And toilet jokes. Um, do you have a favorite joke, Walt? A favorite <laughs> joke? <laughs> yeah. Well... I mean, I can't say that I have a favorite, but this, see, I'm a little bit reluctant here because there's a very good chance to come up with a dad joke that'll just make you guys, you know, turn your Guarantee stomach. Guarantee it's a I'm dad trying joke. Trying to avoid <laughs> that, you know. So. No, don't avoid it. No, no, no. bring it, we, bring it. We the world embrace, must know. We embrace the dad jokes. Oh God! So you want a dad joke? You'll, you'll have to give me a few minutes. I'm not prepared for that. Take one. your time. I have one. If you want one, well, go for, go it. for it. I mean, you don't have to go wait. For it. <clears throat> okay, hold on. Let me remember how it goes. Um. Oh, did you know that French fries weren't made in France? They aren't. No, they're made in Greece. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> that's a good one. Boom, boom. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I've got one that I heard the other day. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh no, I did it wrong. No. Oh! <laughs> That's a good joke, though. I like that. <laughs> I did it wrong. I just think about how it goes. I'm still thinking about, I'm still thinking about Greek-shaped potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the, the Pantheon made of potatoes. <laughs> Chips. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Well, I don't have another joke, but I do have a fun fact I learned yesterday. Go okay. for it. Speaking of potty jokes, did you know that wombat poop comes out in a perfect cube? <laughs> it does Google not. it. Google it. I'm, I'm fact checking this. <laughs> Google it right now. Images of wombat poop. I swear to God. I am, I, I'm not going to look for the images. I'm going to no, just I'll after do, the show. You have to do it. Okay. You have to do of it. Wombat feces. <laughs> uh, okay. Everyone who's listening, Google it. Wow. <laughs> it's true. National Grid Geographic. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> now I have to see an image. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, they poop out pyramids. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Ab- 
absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I'm not sure which is crazier, the fact that they do that or the fact that somebody checked on it and created a, a meme about it. I mean... Well, it wasn't a meme. It was a... It was, um, what was I was, that? Reading was the, I was on National Geographic, the National Geographic website. For, See? There's no meme. Yeah. This was National Geographic. actual factual. Yeah. I guess I was kind of under the impression that everything National Geographic does is a meme. <laughs> Ooh, there's the dead Shots joke. fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. That was just my impression. Well, I'll tell you something honestly. I, I, I have only recently been seeing some National Geographic stuff for the first time in years. Because yeah. Because I took a, a, a Disney Plus um, subscription. And that's right. part of that subscription. And I don't know. I, I have this, this sense that National Geographic's focus shifted fairly substantially from, say, 30, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. There, there's a very dark side to National Geo that didn't exist before. Okay. Such as? Now I'm interested. Yeah, I'm not sure I can even point to... Well, because there's example. so much going wrong in the animal kingdom with, you know, tiger kingdom, Yeah, and yeah, and you, you get a lot of that. I mean, Everybody's extinct and all that. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's done real downhill. Yeah, it, it, it's just, it, it's not as, it's not as happy as it used to be. Mm-mm. That's probably the best way to say it. I National remember Geographic used to be something fun to look forward to. Yeah, it used to be like, oh, oh, my magazine came today. I'd like to go to Fiji and see this. Yeah, yeah. But now it's like, what animal is extinct today? What can you do about it? I mean, even the nature uh, presentations themselves are mm-hmm. usually about some predator killing a prey. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like the whole show, you know? Yep. <laughs> it used to be that was like a little segment that lasted about 30 seconds. <laughs> that was it. Or now, <laughs> now they have the documentaries about, like, these uh, indigenous people and what's wrong with them and why are they different from us. Oh, it's like, what, what about what, what are they doing right that they're living so long? Why don't we try yeah. that? Yeah. It's 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 got a slant to it that I don't really mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't say I've been paying a whole lot of attention to that part of my subscription. Yeah, I ignore I ignore that part of Disney Plus. Yeah. yeah, I mainly stick with Disney and Marvel. I, I, I have been catching up on stuff I hadn't seen. I have to admit, I mean mm-hmm. the stuff that we talked about here on the show. I, for instance, um, when when Black Panther came out, you asked me if I'd seen Black Panther, and I hadn't. Well, now I've seen it. Oh, I, did, I, did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> what did you it was think? Pretty good too. I mean, I'm not really much on on superhero movies, but that one was pretty good. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, you're probably the only one who thinks that, though. <laughs> well, I'm thinking sure that's true. You know, I, it, let's be perfectly honest. That movie wasn't made for me. Okay. True. I mean, <laughs> seriously, I was not the target audience. <laughs> it was. It was. It, as far as Marvel movies go, it was one of the most overrated movies. What's that? that? I put Black Panther. Stunned to silence from the man <laughs> <Dina Kim. laughs> This is not my opinion. I like I, the movie. This is not I my opinion. Freeze. I never freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you froze. I just said it was kind of stunned. <laughs> I'm never stunned. You were doing Black Panther. <laughs> never stunned. Uh, <laughs> Hey, Josephine has a couple of questions for us. I, I thought I'd share those just to kind of all right. get the mood a little bit. Um, she says, well, first of all, she had a question for Daniel. Have you read Dune? And uh, are you aware of the famous quote from the Dune series, fear is the mind killer? She was thinking about um, how you were t- kind of addressing your own fear. Fear is the mind killer. Oh, we were speaking about a specific fear, Josephine, about a specific singular thing, which we actually had a pre-green room discussion on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I agree with you. Fear is a mind killer. It's one of those things. One of my mentors taught me that humans are only born with two fears, the fear of loud noises and falling. Everything else is a learnt behavior. I still mm-hmm. have those. Yeah, those are the only two things we're naturally born with. Everything else is learnt behavior. Is that because so, we fall um, out when we're born? So they can. Is that because we fall out when we're born? Uh, I'm not really sure where it comes from. I just know that fact. So basically, I use it as a screen. If I have fear about anything else, mm-hmm. um, I'm like, oh, okay, well, okay. So you will learn. Do you serve or do you not? Mm. I actually had my um, my NLP hypnotherapy timeline therapy session this morning. Mm-hmm. We did. Um, we've been doing big shifts. So I did a timeline therapy removal today on fear, mm-hmm. which was really, really interesting because mm-hmm. I could. Feel the fear leaving my body as we did. Really? Oh, that's nice. 
it's creepy how it feels. And then you go into, you go to different scenes, you direct it, obviously, and you can feel there's no fear. Like I couldn't even, that we did another emotion and I'd actually been flitting about something just before the call. Mm-hmm. And I went to try and think about it. And I just, it was, I was unable to process the thought. Wow. I was unable to process it. It's crazy how it works. Wow. Um, but yeah, fear, very, very interesting stuff. Sometimes it serves, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes mm-hmm. there are real things that support it. Mm-hmm. But in truth, we're only born with two. Hmm. What are those two again? They're falling and what's the other one? Loud noises. Loud noises, yeah. And we can overcome them. But the, they're the only things that are naturally occurring. So any other fear is learnt behavior. And that's not to say that fears don't have a role to play, mm-hmm. but irrational fear is in fear with no basis in the now that serves a purpose. I am. Well, now I have an interesting spin on the, on the fear of falling thing. Go for it. Because my wife, you would describe her traditionally as being someone who's afraid of heights, mm-hmm. but we've had conversations about it. And she says to me, I'm not, I don't really have a fear of falling. I said, really? Well, what is it that you're afraid of? She says, I have a fear of flying. And I, I have to admit, I still don't quite understand what that means. Yeah. You know, but, but she, she convinces me that, and, and the way she explains it, that comes the closest to me understanding it is if she is at some sort of a high spot and looking down, that gives her vertigo, which is yeah. kind of conducive right. to what you're talking about with fear of falling. And so mm-hmm. I say, well, that's fear of falling. She says, no, 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 it's fear of flying because if I look out, I don't have any fear. Huh. Only if I look down. I and feel like. I haven't come to terms with it. I don't really know how to yeah. evaluate that. I feel like she's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think because if you're looking down. And that's where the fear is. I feel like that's fear of falling. If the fear of flying, it would be the opposite. If you if you look out that way and you have that fear, that would be the fear of flying. And I've said something similar to her. Mm-hmm. And she insists, no, it, she really isn't afraid of the falling. She's afraid of flying. She's afraid that she will literally, she won't describe it this way, that she'll literally she'll start float away. floating away. And that terrifies her. All right. I can get that. I can get that. Well, then explain it to me because I don't get it. <laughs> Well, I don't get the visual part of it, but like the, just the fear of being able to float away. Like I can totally see that fear. Like I will never be in a hot air balloon that once, not never. And that's true. She would, she would be absolutely uninterested. We've had the opportunity to do hot air balloon flights, not going anywhere near it. No, no, yeah. No. I mean, it wasn't even under consideration just because I knew her. She, there was no way she was going to even look at it. You know, is she afraid? Will she, would she go skydiving? Absolutely not. Okay. All right. I'm just trying but to. But there again, there again, what's the thing that skydivers like to do? They fall. They like to, they, they like to free fall with their arms out like it feels like they're flying. Yeah. That's, that's the, the most part important that part. terrifies her. Mm, that's the most important, exciting part of it. I must say that, uh, when I did my, my skydive and I wanted to do more, it was for the flying bit. It was? Yeah. I wanted it to fall. How did it feel with the falling part though? Because it doesn't feel like you're falling, it feels like you're flying. That's the. Oh, it's, I'm I'm getting upset just thinking about it. <laughs> I, can't I did I did I did a fifteen thousand foot skydive. Oh God! It was amazing. Mm. Like Mm-mm. amazing. I can see the addiction to it, and I'm not an extreme sports person. You won't catch me doing yeah. a bungee jump or anything like that. But no, no. Falling out of a plane, and because you you're not, you're like it's like yeah. this. So you're actually flying through the sky and then when you do the actual parachute bit and you're like gliding it's just oh, it's... <laughs> try do you know what you do try the indoor you can do the indoor skydive stuff i, I would actually do that i would actually yeah, do me that. and olga went last year we went to, my we went i would probably not do it <laughs> there must be one near you um uh, i think there's one in rhode island actually i would go and try it out try that and then you'll be like Oh, that's what he was talking about. Cool. That's that's probably as far as I'll get. You don't need, to, but to be yeah. honest, it felt yeah. it felt very similar. Okay. Without the impending death possibility. Yeah, that's the part so that's I That's like. probably your best bet. <laughs> All right, I will definitely put that on the. Bucket it would not list. work for me though. It would not work for me. For me, my, in my mind, it would be the opposite. 
for me, the safer one is the one jumping out of the plane. What? You could break your legs. What's wrong with you? But you're a couple of feet off of the ground. Yeah. Versus being 10,000. Reverse gravity. I understand. You have to, and, I'm sorry, well, you have to break that one down. How is I, that I, I don't think I the best. The closest I can come to explaining it, and it's completely irrational, because what we're talking about is fears. I mean, fears are irrational fears, anyway, right? you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the the best I can come to explain it is if I needed to fire a parachute five feet off the ground, it wouldn't get up in time. But if I'm up in the air, there's plenty of time for the parachute to open. And, but there's a trampoline. And, well, and I under, I, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's, a, it's a fear. It's a That's the whole yeah, point. Yeah. It's a fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting, though. So you would rather regular skydive than indoor skydive? Well, I really don't want to do either one. <laughs> <laughs> that part I get. That part I get. <laughs> but if I had, you know, a gun to my head, yeah, okay. I'll take, if, if I'm going to, you know, risk my neck, I might as well enjoy, you know, the surroundings instead of just seeing a brick wall gun to over your there. head, you're jumping out of a plane is what you're saying. <laughs> you have the choice to be indoors in a safe bubble, and you're going to jump out of a plane. If if I'm going to deal with fear, I might as well enjoy the ride. <laughs> I hear that. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm disagreeing with you, but I hear you. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> that's the nature of fear. It's, it is irrational. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's pure emotion. And okay. it does play a, a, a role. I mean, it's not like we've never had a need, a real physical need for fear. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, in the jungle and you're being chased by a leopard, it, it, there's probably good reason to be afraid, you know, I you know, but it's just not quite so common in modern culture. I mean, there aren't too many leopards in say Boston or New York city. They're or, up you know. here though. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where the lions will get you. Yeah, lions exactly. and tigers and bears. Oh my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tis true. Tis true. Mm-hmm. Um, something else that Joe's being brought up, not law of attraction related. And I think this is because of the way we started the show because we just went right to sky high. She <laughs> says, what comedy movies or TV shows do you like? And this is why I got to start with Alex because this is like her ballpark. This is her ballpark. Oh my God. <laughs> Justine, feel free to private not? message me. <laughs> <laughs> Beware, you will get a, an extensive list. <laughs> no, what's my, what's my, um, LOA today email again? Give, give it to Josephine, and I will. I will give her. I'm going to give her a list anyway. But I'm just saying. Well, I think we just set you up with Alex at elevatetoday.net, didn't we? Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I think it was. I mean, it was that simple. All right. Well, we yeah. We can set you up too, Dan. If you want, I can you know forward emails to you that way. If you want to have a. Oh yeah, sure. That'd be groovy. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a note. Thank you. Have we so, done my Twitter picture yet? Say again? It? No, Walt hasn't gotten to it yet. I asked him the other day. Yeah, I've. <laughs> The, 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 let's just say that there are substantial there stories behind this. <laughs> there are substantial stories and reasons why we've been stressed out, and these tie yeah. into them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I a little bit. Things. I mean, if here we I are. If I knew how to do it, I would help you, but I don't. So, we're, we're, so. we're, we're in, supposedly in this quarantine situation, stuck at home, and you would think I would have gotten through the list by now. The list has gotten longer. <laughs> All the free time in the world, but no, no. More the list you. has gotten longer. I can't believe it. How is that possible? <laughs> I do not know, sir. I, do not I don't know, know either. <laughs> but anyways, um, back to comedy shows and was it shows and movies? It was comedy movies and or TV shows. Okay. I've recently been plugging Upload. <laughs> okay. Very I watched upload. the first five minutes of one of those, by the way. I'm excited to get into it. Yay! See, I'm told you, I'm good at recommending shows. I've been telling you. Walt's the only, like, He's the only deficit in my 100% score. I'm you sorry about that. Affiliate. I really am. You know, I, <laughs> no, I really no. am. I, I don't like to ruin people's records. <laughs> it's okay. I'll take the 99%. It's fine. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uploads are pretty, it, it, I thought it was going to be more intense than it was funny. And it turned out to be really funny. And I found out why. The guy who did um, upload actually did Office and Parks and Rec and uh, one other show. I forget what it was, but he's, he's done that whole thing. Comedy. Good comedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what else do I got? Let's see. Comedies, comedies, comedies. Something just got added to Netflix. What was it? They're okay. doing, Steve Carell's doing a show called The General or something like, or Space, mm -hmm. something. Space with, Force. Space Force. That looks is like it. Space it's Force or is it Space, Space something? 
space. It looks like it's going to be hilarious. Yeah, well, it's Steve Carell, so duh. <laughs> he spent 40 years learning to be this funny. <laughs> oh, we'll try to avoid the politics today. <laughs> Ooh, that was a quite a funny joke. Oh, it was. But so, but yeah, so, so, Josephine, if you want to message me, you can message me and I will send you an extensive list. Message me with the top three shows that you're interested in and then I will know what to give you. Well, that's a good idea because that you have an extensive knowledge. I do. I you do. really do. Well, that's, you... that's what I do. Or she can join my group, Spoiler Alert, on Facebook. You haven't plugged that in a while. Yeah. Not. Oh, yeah, I, group. I, have, I have a Facebook group called Spoiler Alert. What is it? Spoiler Alert for TV Fanatics. Why was it a night? I, I don't know. About it. I don't, I don't know. I don't even do Facebook consumption, but I would consume that Facebook. <laughs> well, Google it right now. She, she it, turned to doing the group because she used to do a podcast on the subject. That got to be a little bit too much, so she figured she'd do it in the group. Kind yeah. of similar to the way you do your group. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it was a while ago that we last talked about it. Well, we talked about that about a year ago, I think. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been yeah. a while. Yeah, I haven't even asked you for an update lately. I mean, I must, I'm off my game. That's all. Well, update, uh, Jerry Stiller died. Heard that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's what's, that that's sad. the latest thing I've been posting. Mm-hmm. Who? Who died? Jerry Who? Ben Stiller's dad. He was the, he was the father on, um, he was George's father on Seinfeld. On Seinfeld, yeah. Oh, how sad. Yeah. He yeah. was 92. Didn't die of COVID though. He, natural causes. Oh, so one made it through the, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> Well, a lady in um, Boston, actually, she was 92, and she just uh, recovered. Oh, so that didn't get deleted from the inter- I'm going to stop now. <laughs> I know, right? It actually was on the news. Get out of here. <laughs> something good actually happened on the news. Well, I have to send you something, by the way. I don't want to talk about it on the internet. Okay. Live on the interwebs. I don't want them to come and – I don't want to get – To delete this, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get kidnapped in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want you to get kidnapped in the middle of the night either. Yeah. So are we going to have to start, like, you know, encrypting this through Signal app or something like that in order to protect ourselves? Let's just everyone who's watching this right now get a VPN. I've got a good one. <laughs> what is the difference between an irrational fear and a sensible choice based on current circumstances? I don't think there is a difference. Because as I thought of that, I mean, I was being playful. And I know right, right. The night. But suppose that they were kidnapping people in the middle of the night. Would that not be a reasonable fear to have? A concern? Yeah, yeah, that's reasonable. This is one to explore. <laughs> well, ultimately, any fear can be a reasonable concern. It just depends on what your perspective is. Yeah. And what you're choosing to create. Mm. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Eyebrows and all. <laughs> Don't forget there. <laughs> He's working on doing them singly. We'll, we'll give him some time on that one. <laughs> yeah. I call those the Millhouse eyebrows, where he raises one or the other. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Only the right. I can do my left. There you go. Yeah, I can only do my right. I'm looking forward to hearing what shows Josephine is a, is a gangster for. Yeah, as I was saying, that's what I do on Spoiler Alert. When someone joins the group, I ask them what are their top three shows. So that yeah, way, I've just seen you I, did that. So I'm, I'm yeah. lost now because I don't have any favorite things. <laughs> what? Well, well, what are the shows that you like to watch? I have no favorite things. And my autistic brain just shut down because you said, what are my three favorite things? So I actually have to breathe and decompress. <laughs> Get the heart to her and understand You're that totally I can put three shows. Didn't make you, didn't mean to make you melt down. It's I understand it's okay. that. <laughs> that would that would ordinarily ask me to look at how to solve a country's economic crisis. I'll be fine. Right. Ask me my three favorite shows, and that's a panic attack. Right. That, would a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. that would have been a panic attack, but I'm good now. Hey, I, I'm learning from you, Daniel. I'm learning from you. <laughs> When she asked me the same question, and I didn't have, I had a very similar answer, but I didn't have an answer that was tied to, you know, anything like Asperger's. 
Yeah. It was just, I, I couldn't think of anything. Oh, no, no, that wasn't an acceptable answer. But tie it in with Asperger's and all of a sudden it's totally acceptable. Only because I, I have Asperger's too, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> all I, I had to know oh. was know that, that one trick. That was it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just say, all you have to say is that question caused me anxiety. And I've been, my bad, yo. Aut- autism spectrum assimilation, I see you speaking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Appropriation, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, you didn't. <laughs> autism spectrum appropriation. Woo, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and a hashtag. Wow, you're going to actually write that one out? I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The thing is about hashtags is like because it's a hashtag, it doesn't it doesn't autocorrect. So I don't know if I'm sending this to you spelled correctly. So <laughs> I, I, I've done some spell checking. I, I have done some correcting. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> you give me something to work with. That's all I really need. You know? All right. <laughs> I'm gonna do an homage to you with these. To who? To you with my oh, own. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry, I'm spelling. Please hold. <laughs> What's that? I'm spelling with nails on my phone, so it's like. <sighs> See, the other problem here is that we're we're doing a podcast, and people listening to the podcast are wondering what we're doing on video. That oh yeah, so this is a great time for you to think about subscribing, Alex. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Segway. This is how we segue around here. This is how we do it. We can't afford that either. I said we can't afford that either. Afford what? This is how we do it. Did you see James Corden and how many times he played that and how much it cost him? It cost him a thousand dollars every time he played it. Really? Because he's he's obsessed with that song and all he played was the the little hook. All he played is this is how we do it. You're thirty seconds of a song free. Who said that? When? Where? Because I was checking for my podcast because I reached out to um, I reached out to Common because I used his song Dream, The Dreamer. Nice, nice. Podcast. So I nice. reached out to his team and I said, you know, can I have permission? I'm happy to like, make a donation. It's like, no, mm. you're allowed to use 30 seconds for free. Huh. All right, then do you. Subscribe to YouTube. Or daily happy. Oh my god, I'm dead. Please send the takedown request to Daniel Mangana at Daniel. <laughs> Take that request. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyways, as I was going to say, if you want to subscribe to YouTube and see our smiling faces, this is how you do it. You this go to is YouTube. How you do it. <laughs> Less than 30 seconds. So you go to YouTube, you search LOA Today podcast videos, look for our smiling faces. Click down below to the red subscribe button, then click to the side. There's a little silver bell. And once you see that little silver bell, you click all so you always be notified when we are live. So there it is. That's how you get to see us on video. Now, we also have to let people know how to see us if they want to listen to the podcast, which, by the way, is what 95% of our listeners do. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw that bit in, too, because if you're not yet subscribed and you aren't really sure how to do it, just go to LOAToday.net. And you'll see instructions on how to do it at the top of the page. It just walks you right through it. Daniel did it in one click. So there's the, the, the gauntlet's been thrown down. Can you get it done in one click? Some people take two, you know, but hey, even one or two is not that bad. So become a subscriber. And by the way, our numbers do continue to improve as time has gone on. Now, I have been doing a little marketing. I've been doing a little bit of uh, outreach. And people are liking our page on Facebook. And they're getting more information. And they're listening to episodes. And it's it's paying off, you know. I guess the bottom line is people like us. Yeah. I like the fact that people like us. And they're liking us in larger numbers over time. I like that. I like, I like that, that they like us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. In fact, I'm I am already I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm already thinking in terms of thousands of listeners instead of hundreds of listeners. Oh I hear close. that. I hear that. We're getting very, very close. Specifically so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good stuff there. So anyway, yeah, thank you all for subscribing. And I really do also want to take a moment to thank people who've been the longer term subscribers because they stuck with us through thick and thin. 
And mm-hmm. some of them, I mean, there are a few who've been around listening to us for, you know, a number of years now, back in the day when we were having like, you know, 20 listeners a month, that kind of a thing. <laughs> and I just appreciate them so much because they, they stuck with us. They that, hung in there. That's what a true friend is, you know? Yeah. That's where you find out who your friends really, really are. Facts. Even though they're people in many cases who I didn't even know who they were, mm-hmm. well, I'm so grateful for them. It's really good. So thank you guys. Appreciate that. We appreciate you. Appreciate us. You know what we're doing here? We are demonstrating how to deal with fear and stress and get ourselves yep. into the positive range without actually talking about it. Yep. Cause right, we're at the gratitude stage right now. We are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we flew there. It wasn't hard yep. to get there either. Now it was not. There was, there is a key element that I think we should bring in. We mm-hmm. do it together. Mm-hmm. If just one of us was doing this podcast, that would be a whole lot harder to do. But when you can play yes. off of each other and feed off each other's energy, mm-hmm. I mean, that's collaborative huge. energy wins. Mm-hmm. And then you get Daniel crooning into the microphone, and that just kind of adds to it, you know? <laughs> what can I say? Crooning's just what I do, bro. You yeah. do it really He's, well. He sings all my favorite songs, so I, I enjoyed this hour. <laughs> <laughs> I had, um, you, can I, t- my, my four year old stepdaughter's taken to calling me bro, and I don't know where she got it from. Uh, okay. everyone's using the word bro now. She's four years old. She doesn't talk to many. Does she, bros. does she TikTok? Oh yeah, there it is. Boom. Ah. Uh-huh. I have a twelve-year-old niece, and this is all hey, they do bro. now. Hey, bro. Yeah. The face she goes. Yeah, bro. Hey, bro. Come at me, bruh. It's very interesting. Yeah. Technology, you, social media, man. What, what does it say to you, though, if it's that interesting? I just I look to myself as a four-year-old, and I don't see myself <laughs> so adeptly using technology. To ascertain how to call grown-ups bro. And but it's a different generation now. All they know is technology. Exactly. There's many diff- many generations difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was four years old, technology wasn't even thought of. Well, that's not entirely true, but it was pretty close. Yeah. Let's just say we were still in caves, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Walt was riding dinosaurs to school. That's it right. was cool. <laughs> he had a stegosaurus for a pet. It was awesome. <laughs> I hear all the stories. Uh, Look next door to the Flintstones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. How awful Crazy. was the Flintstones movie? How what? Oh. Well, which one? The, we'll talk about the first one that was the beginning of the awfulness with John Goodman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. It, some things don't need to be live action. Some needs to j- just be left in their golden age as they are and just yeah. cherished as that. Are there any live action that were originally comics that worked in your view? Hmm. I mean, I can think of one that I thought worked, but it didn't necessarily work the way the comic strip worked. It worked because of who played the lead. Which one? What was it? That was Robin Williams' Popeye. Just because he was amazing. No, he was amazing. He was amazing. Was the movie, though? Not so much. <laughs> the movie was kind of so-so, but his interpretation of Popeye was more. Yeah. I, believe, I believed in him. I believed in him, and I believed in Olive Oil. Anything he does is amazing. I'm sorry. I it mean, is. More yeah. Nanu, Nanu. Yes, big facts, big facts. Rest in peace, my good man. Where yeah, remind such me a of shame. The story he told about if a strand how- of your consciousness lingers around hearing our words, <laughs> We appreciate you, and man. We're a damn good Popeye. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, I'm reminded of the uh, speech he, you know, the speech he gave, but the story he tells about how he got his Academy Award when he won the Academy, when he won the Oscar. He says mm-hmm. the Oscar has a pretty short half life because the day you win it, first of all, he, he he does this wonderful or did this wonderful routine about how fast the whole thing happens. Mm-hmm. So he, he he talks like 50 miles an hour, talking about to the point where he, he gets the Oscar and he's up on stage and he's forgetting half his speech. Mm-hmm. And then he finishes the speech and then he says, the next day, everybody say, hey, hey, way to go. And naming the movie and so forth. And the next day it's, hey, how are you? And the next day it's, you're Mork, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> Mork, <half-life. laughs> right? <laughs> Did he win it for um, good marketing? Uh, well, I, he won- hmm. Did he win for Mrs. Doubtfire? Oh, I don't think so. That was a fabulous film. I can't remember what he won it for. 
I don't remember. And, and you should have won it for everything. Good. Pretty much, me. yeah. I mean, <laughs> take, you know, Aladdin, Mrs. Doubtfire, and all the others, and just kind of cram just them all together. Such a wide and range. Such a wide range. I mean, if there was anybody who should have gotten a Lifetime Achievement Award, it was him. Mm. Oh, Aladdin. That was a, that was a good uh, live action that came out of a cartoon. Okay. Yeah, that was well done, actually. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't appreciate the songs that they added, but Will Smith did an amazing job, considering who he was coming up behind. Well, he did a ballsy job, is what he did. Yeah, that yeah. No, because nobody wanted to touch it. They were like, "I'm well, not touching there. Robin Williams' work." Woo, no. I mean, it, it <laughs> was blasphemous. Like, it, it was like being one of the composers of the Harry Potter movies after John Williams started off. I mean, you don't try right? to touch what he did. You just can't do it. <laughs> You can't perfect perfection. Right. <laughs> wow. It, it was an yeah. unenviable task, but mm-hmm. still pulled it off. It yeah. Really I also believe Will Smith can do no wrong, and I do mean in any movie, although I have not – After Earth is the only movie I have of his I have not seen. Don't watch it. Don't – don't. I, I wasn't it. planning on it. Wasn't planning on it. And um, Wild Wild West, I am the only one in the world who loves that movie. Okay. I <laughs> swear. <laughs> Now you're tainted. Now, oh. I don't, I don't. <laughs> oh, I thought we were friends. Oh. We're, we're, we're friends. Hashtag Will Smith. Hashtag when, we're, Will when Will Smith's involved, I just basically won't take your opinion seriously. <laughs> and I say that with all the love in the world. <laughs> he, he was really up against something impossible there, too, because there's never been a good Wild Wild West movie. They've all been bad. And, you know, so oh, how wait, there's they, more? Wait, wait, oh, yeah. wait. So how do you improve on mediocrity? That, that's the- oh, no. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen the Will Smith World World Wars movie? Well, that was great. What is wrong with you? <laughs> have you seen it? Well, oh my god! I have not seen it. Beginning to don't end, watch it. Don't, don't, wa- no, watch it. Don't. Watch it. <laughs> Take it. It was a, a salt. It was a steam powered spider, Alex. <laughs> Of it. I don't care. It was a steam powered <laughs> spider. <laughs> Technology was way above their pay grade in that movie, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, I mean, they had a train that could do anything. I'm just saying. That was, um, it was a lucid dream. It was a lucid dream <laughs> mixture of James Bond, mm-hmm. Will Smith, mm-hmm. and more lucid dreaming. It was just a lucid dream. It's okay. You're not the only one I've gotten flack for for liking that movie. Like I've been okay. hated on on Facebook. It, it, I'm, not it's hating. Okay. I'm not hating on you. I'm simply <laughs> saying that there were some things that I wouldn't. You won't, you won't take my opinion on. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. I, I accept it. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, Alex. I applaud you for liking it. Uh, why? Because I applaud anybody who likes something regardless of what other people think of it. Well, that's because I'm my, I'm my own unicorn. You certainly are. Well, there's a reason mm-hmm. why you're a unicorn, right? That's There's yep. only one horn. I mean, it's just... It's, I'm it's rare and mystical in Rare, life. yeah. You know, so that's just part of it, right? But yep. I, I love it whenever anybody likes something and sticks to what they like regardless mm-hmm. of what the herd has in mind. Yeah, I don't do peer pressure. Never have, never, never will. Which I admire. I think it's great. Um, yeah. I think we need more of it. I think that there's actually too much herd following. Mm-hmm. I really think, you know. Yeah. So, and, and I'll be perfectly honest. That's one of the reasons why I'm not big on watching TV and movies because that that sets me off from the herd in a big, big way. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It does. And every once in a while, I do find something that I like, and so that also sets me apart because the, the stuff that I really like, most people have never heard of, first of all. Mm, mm-hmm. you know, which, well, that's also why I don't watch the news. That's, that also makes you a sheep. Tell me about it, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I, well, actually, I used to feel like there was only two of us. I thought it was only me and Joel, and then I found out there were others, and I kind of ruined <laughs> but it. But wait, there's more of us. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> there's other channels. <laughs> no, that's true. That's you true. can turn it off at 10 p.m. <laughs> And I, actually, I'm very pleased that so many people do turn off the news. They just won't watch. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. it's really great. Especially now. It's like, it's, it's fear driven. I got a question for you guys. We've talked here on the podcast quite a bit 
uh, over the last few weeks about how this situation, this whole pandemic thing, is going to mm-hmm. lead to some amazing stuff, a lot of which we can't foresee. Mm-hmm. And I know that uh, I've talked about with you guys as well as with other co-hosts. I'm wondering, are you seeing anything new or are you thinking of anything new that you hadn't focused on before or noticed before that you see as a good thing coming out? Just wondering if there's anything new that's come to your head in you know the last few weeks or so. I see a lot of people being more grateful and appreciating things that they, mm. that they no longer can do. Like parents are appreciating teachers for what they do now mm-hmm. because now they have mm. to homeschool. And um, couples who are doing this together are appreciating the fact that they can spend time in close quarters together without the hustle and bustle of everything going on and actually enjoying each other's company or not enjoying each other's company and finding out that this relationship is not for you. That's <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> but I both expect the divorce rate to kind of take off and <laughs> play around in this thing. Oh, the courts are going to be busy. They're going to be busy. all over. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. But, yeah, that's but, what but, I appreciate and the, gratefulness. But, but with the uh, requirements in place, it's going to be a drive through right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you can go to Vegas and get a drive through marriage, you can go and get a drive through divorce. And I believe there are places where you can do that. I'm pretty sure. Well, I mean, the place where Daniel's at is well known for it. They called it a Mexican divorce for a reason. Oh, never heard that. What? <laughs> yeah, that, that dates back many, many decades. Mexican divorce. Me- Me- Mexico. I've heard, of Mexi- I've heard of Mexican something else, but I'm not going to say it. Is a Mexican divorce a topper? A topper, isn't it? Uh, Why do that as a topic? No, is it when you top them? Like, we're divorced now because you're in the ground. Isn't that what Mexicans do? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? We, we, we have what definitely found <laughs> another level to the generation gap. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That isn't, I've never, I'm going to go to Google. I, I defer to Google. <laughs> I defer to Google. Okay. He's in Mexico and has never heard this. I'm just saying. Because it's a it's a, it's a, a very seriously Catholic country. They don't do rusty. It's true. It is it is a very seriously um, Catholic country, and yet there was a time, particularly back, I'm going to say the 1920s, wow. 40s, where I was going to say before our time. Yeah, oh, how fascinating. Yeah, if, if you wanted to get a divorce, that was the place to go, and I think it was on the border towns more than anything else. I don't think it was throughout the country. Well, I know that that's where you go to get, no, is it Mexico? Yeah, it is Mexico that you, I'm not going to say what you go there for, but you go there for other things that happen during a marriage. Oh, how how fascinating. And I think actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it actually was tied to when America was under prohibition. Mm. Because you also went across the border to get a drink. To get tequila. You can get a drink here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like, there was drinking. um, Fireworks. There was like horse racing, betting, various kinds. You know, there was mm-hmm. all the vices that you couldn't get because they were all banned. Yeah. <laughs> you just went to Tijuana to do everything. Pretty much, yeah. Mm-hmm. How blinking fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch YouTube, you can see Daniel's face as he's Googling. See, there's a reason to subscribe. <laughs> That's <laughs> Oh, like uh, but this. following up on the question that I raised before, I also want to ask you this. Do you guys see any signs that because of what we're going through and a, a larger number of people, I won't say, uh, you know, a large swath of the population, but a larger number of people are looking within than before? Because we tend to blame outside and we tend to point fingers outside and we tend to do all this stuff. We, you know, we're always looking at, well, What's the cause of the disease and where, you know, who's doing what and who's to blame and it's all externally driven. And no, I see the opposite. signs of, of, of it going, at least with, with more people than before, are more people going inside and looking to the power within. Do you see that happening? Mm-mm. You don't? No, I see the opposite. You think that, that people are. Everything, are everything is this damn COVID. Everything is, oh, I can't do this because it's a damn COVID area. I can't do that. Don't, never thinking that maybe if you stayed home, put a mask on and washed your hands, we'd be out by now. <laughs> <laughs> Look inside Thank your you, sink. Daniel. 
Are, are people going within or are they, are they staying <laughs> external? I think people are, depending on alcohol and complaining and consulting mm. the media. Yeah. Mm. Because the pandemic's not going to, we can only go to the limits of who and what we are. Mm hmm right? So if I'm not a person that's ready to accept responsibility and create change, a pandemic's not going to change that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to seek new outlets or I'm going to seek new places to blame. So if the energy is going to continue to express itself, it's going to find a new form because who I am hasn't changed. The energy that's coming through me to seek form isn't going to change composition. It's going to change expression and be the same energy um, manifesting itself. And so I would say that those who are at the precipice, perhaps of change or ready for change, this may have been a catalyst for it. Those who were perhaps backsliding from change, maybe called back to change and expansion. Mm. But everyone that's going to be a, a hunk that blames every other Tom, Dick and Harry for their experiences has got a new thing to blame. Yep. Everyone who's always seeking something to numb them has got a new thing to, to, numb, to numb them. And that's... Against universal law, that's my 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 feeling on it anyway. So yeah. you're you're kind of bearish on the idea that uh, people are going to looking be looking to their internal power and they're they're going to keep looking outside. I think everything's going to every. So change happens when there's a vibrational change that's followed through and supported by shift in beliefs and then a shift in choices and actions. Mm -hmm. Even if the disruption in the energetic field creates a vibrational change, if the mindset is still locked in one way and our actions and choices are still the same, there's not going to be a change. The expression might be different because the inputs are giving us different things to use to express the same energy, but it's not going to actually be a change. So people aren't going to suddenly look within unless there's a choice, either consciously or unconsciously, that's matched with a vibration and matched with a mental rehearsal of the outcome. Mm. Well, that's my thoughts. The the change that you're referring to, the, the potential change anyway, I could see that happening if they find that all of their external choices or at least the external choices that they're looking at all don't work for them. And I've seen, that's why I'm raising this question because right now I think a lot of people are getting frustrated by the options that are available. None of them seem to work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there are more and more people becoming frustrated. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, when you, when you feel like the world is against me, when you're, mm -hmm. when you're in that kind of a mindset and none of the s solutions that you were hoping for are really panning out as solutions, that's, that's a stress time. That's what, that, I mean, that what's our original topic, right? Stress and yep. fear. That's mm -hmm. a stress time. That's time where all of a sudden, you know, nothing's working and you're starting to feel the angst of it. You know, maybe you're even getting depressed about it. Maybe you're getting angry about it, but you're certainly not feeling good about it. And that's when people tend to change. So that's why I'm wondering. Hmm. It's, but that doesn't naturally lead to the change. There has to still be a change in choice, whether consciously yeah. or unconsciously. That's an invitation. It is. And that's an opportunity. And, and but maybe if that opportunity is not, not taken up. Yeah, many people may not take it up. I'm just suggesting, is it possible that some people are taking it up who weren't taking it up before because of what's going oh, on? Oh, yeah, definitely. There will be some. There will be some. It's like trauma. People have approached trauma. And I don't necessarily mean like dark trauma, but like disruptive experiences in different ways. Some people take celebration points in one way and for, you know, if it's half a glass for one and half a glass full for one and half a glass empty for another. So it all comes down to, at the end of the day, how consciously or unconsciously there is a, a resignment shift or <laughs> continuation of the choices that we're making against the backdrop of those new inputs. I can give you new information. You can accept or reject it. Mm. It can inform you to make a new choice or you can use it to say, oh, that Daniel, all he does is chat poopy coop, right? <laughs> or, I'm back poop. or like, you know, that was a square response. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could be like, okay, this is new information. And then against that, you can maybe make a micro shift or even a quantum leap in a new direction. But there has to be a point of change. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, yes, I think there does have to be a point of change. And, and I think I see the point of change happening. Again, not necessarily across the whole swath of the population, but 
I, I guess where I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it in the various ways that people are kind of rebelling against what's been going on. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily right or wrong to be doing that. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. it, I've described it before. It's like the human spirit is saying, enough, I've got to be alive. I got to live. And that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it for people who I would not normally associate as being spiritual. Mm. I could say I could see it where people are becoming more creative with how to pass the time yeah. and how to keep their, their yeah. family and friends entertained and things of that nature. That's true. I mean, we're seeing a lot of stuff on you know social mm -hmm. media, YouTube and so forth, illustrating in clear detail how people are coming up with really creative ways, particularly with their kids, trying to help their yeah. kids. Because, I mean, probably in, in one sense, the greatest victims of this are the kids because they have so much energy and they have nowhere to go with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a yeah. rough one, your kid. And I'm seeing, uh, seeing like, what was I going to say? Um, apps, apps are that are coming out to help people, like um, Instacart yep. and um, check on your neighbors and stuff like that and, and things of that nature. So I'm seeing a lot of creativity come, come to the front. In fact, we even had an experience here in our complex that you've been seeing some places online where mm -hmm. somebody's having a birthday and a whole line of cars comes by and yep. we had the entire fire department come through our complex. There's sirens wailing and we're all looking at like, Oh my God, what's going on? The building's burning down and there's balloons coming off of the somebody's birthday, you know, on the other side of the complex. So, Oh, that's cute. So I got, we got to actually see it. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, there are so many different ways that people are finding to just kind of, break through the fear and they're not doing it necessarily because they're spiritual or because they believe in positive psychology or anything. They're doing it just because they're human beings who just refuse to be held down. Mm. Word. And that, that to me is that that's the best because there's no way to keep that down. It's not like you have to orchestrate a recovery with that. Mm. That's just a recovery that happens. I like that. So, Thank you to all of you who are spontaneously bursting. <laughs> <laughs> Make you all very happy. Yeah. Very happy. I love it. I love seeing the human spirit in all the different ways that it displays itself. Yeah. Just take a note that bursting is better than imploding. So try that. Oh. <laughs> very good one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> totally on board with that one. Yeah. You know, I like fireworks instead of, you know, mushroom clouds. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we can all get on board with that one. Add a little sparkle to your day, you know? <laughs> and that's from the Sparkle Queen, we have to say. You know. I'm just saying. She's got all her sparkle going. You even oh, have yeah. fingernails, don't you? Hold She's on, got, hold on, hold on. Uh oh, what's this? Oh, 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 sparkle. I got a new belt. Oh, Sam. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> You're blinding the camera. I know. Can't handle it. Can't handle the heat rocks in the kitchen. <laughs> Did you say heat rocks in the kitchen? I sure did. I used to say that when I was a teenager. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, thanks. I'm not sure. Should I ask what, what you're talking about there? Because I have I don't know what the reference is. It's kind of like to, it's if it's too hot in the kitchen, you know, that type of saying. Oh, okay. Can't handle the heat rocks in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for cooling, cooling us at old folks, you know. No problem. No yeah, problem. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, we got about uh, two minutes left. Uh, we've done all of our promos. So we've we've got that done. Um, well, we often finish off with a, a last thought. We we've done a pretty good job of mm -hmm. you know bouncing Coming up full circle and from you know stress and all that kind of stuff. Yep. All right. So let's leave one last idea. Let's say somebody has listened to the entire show and I don't know how they did it, but they didn't crack a smile. What? Yeah, I, I don't quite get that myself, but, you know, I'm just kind of supposing what if there is somebody who just wasn't quite getting there? What's the one thing we can give them that will just kind of put them over the edge before the show's done? You may want to do a soul check. <laughs> <laughs> You're not laughing at five o'clock. You have no soul. <laughs> JK, don't at me. <laughs> So there you go. Hashtag soul check. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> well, you know, there's truth to that, actually. <laughs> That's true. Because ultimately, any time that we're breaking through, any time that we are shifting away 
from the lower vibration stuff into the high vibration stuff. We're not going to do it by reaching out externally. We have to connect in some way internally, and that is a soul mm-hmm. trip. So you're right, as usual. As, yeah, I know, right? And <laughs> beautiful, too. <laughs> I try, I try. Another reason to subscribe, to play What Color Is Alex's Hair Today? That's true. Yes. <laughs> uh, are you going to be changing this? I mean, you're, you're sticking with this one for a while, I think. Oh, yeah, for a long while. I love this. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm thinking about trimming the pink, though, and just doing the blue and purple. I don't know, but Kenny said no. He likes it. I think it's a winning color, really. It's a combination. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. doing this one for a while. Yeah, and it, and it matches your background, too. I was going to say, there's like a, a dance between yeah. the shades of the hair and the background. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, please refer to the earlier promo that Alex did on becoming a subscriber on YouTube. Facts. Just, yeah, you missed you missed the dance. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good hour. So I, it worked. First of all, we reached our goal. We said before we got started, right? We, by the end yep. of the hour, we're going to be feeling great, and we are feeling yep. great. So I am I, feeling I, excellent. Forward. Well done, guys. Air high five, guys. All right. Here we go. Oh, nice. All right. Hold on. Fabulous. I'm feeling (laughs) fabulous. So thank you much. Thank you to our partner in the sky. Thank you, live streamers. Thank you, podcasters. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.